You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sembrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making Locked On Rays your very first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Rays is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On Rays. Well, Ulysses, we've had these uh, types of episodes before where we uh, start on a somewhat gloomy note with the uh, news that was just uh, recently reported regarding one Shane Boss. Indeed. And uh, man, I already knew because I've been saying this since our player review of Shane. Uh, he's not going to be in the opening day roster. Wink, wink. We knew this. Yeah, which is kind of ridiculous. No, isn't he deserving or he's totally earned his spot? Like who else is it? The service time thing is so stupid, quite frankly, if that's why you're holding him back. I don't want to go back to CBA lockout talk, but yeah. uh, I will for the next 20 seconds. That's why service time manipulation should have been one of the biggest right. things that they that the players should have argued for. Yeah. And he's just going to get Chris Bryant. He's just going to get David Priced. Uh -huh. And now there's an actual excuse. Yes. But reading John Romano's Tampa Bay Times article on it, he already like uh, was – saying how he wasn't probably going to make the rotation which is insane because yeah who it's like what who is actually deserving and has the stuff above him right now i mean you could argue that if he picked up where he left off last season that he would if not be the ace be the penciled in number two <laughs> and if not that number three definitely not number four number five exactly exactly so then that that kind of grinds my gears yeah. a little bit uh but in again, fact i would probably if i was the raise and service time manipulation wasn't an issue i would have shane mcclanahan one Corey kluber two and then shane boss three there you go there you go so but that's not going to be what's going to happen on opening day or for the next several weeks after opening day no not at all that are, are they they found the loose bodies once again the loose bodies uh, come to attack which Every by the way th this sounds a lot worse than i think it actually is that you hear the just announced Shane Boz undergoes arthroscopic. Oh my gosh, I butchered that arthroscopic surgery to remove loose bodies from his right elbow. That sounds like oh my gosh, his arm was massacred. Yeah, but uh, Tommy John's a lot worse. There's a lot yes. worse other procedures you could be going through if you're a pitcher. Well, this is probably one of the things that you want to know as a race fan is how long until he can throw a baseball again. And that's two to three weeks. Yeah. So in two to three weeks, he starts ramping up again or starting again, basically, because he was just throwing bullpens mm -hmm. in spring training right now. Um, his arm tightened up on him at night and then they got an MRI and they saw the loose body. So two to three weeks which by the way, that will be three weeks. They just say the two weeks to get us kind of like, oh, okay, it's just two weeks. It's three weeks. Yeah. It's going to be three weeks. You know, the Rays are going to take care of their, of their pitchers as they should two weeks and seven days. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it'll be three weeks. And then after that, he needs to ramp up. And by that point, if you're already going to be missing some games and it's early in the season, guess what? He's going to take his sweet time, mm -hmm. or the Rays are going to take his sweet the, their their sweet time with him, and that means a month of actual like yeah. a spring training thing. So, in a month and three weeks, you could possibly be seeing uh, Shane Boz in a theater, you know, near you. Yeah. Uh, do the Rays go out and add some sort of pitcher in free agency, <clears throat> a tested veteran? <clears throat> so no, Chris Archer. No, no Scott Casimir. No, no, no Johnny Cueto or Brett Anderson or Jay Happ or uh, pick the name off the. I, there's not a lot of free agents remaining. I Don't mean, uh, uh, you know as far as quality goes, as far as pitchers are concerned. Uh, why are all these options players that you know should have, you know, uh, hung it up a little I, bit? Maybe I I hate to be the hindsight is 2020 guy, but man. First off, you can never have enough pitching. I think we've learned that pretty sure. early on. But sure, uh, would be nice to you know be able to pencil in Joe Ryan right about now. But I understand you can't go back and look at that. And I still love that trade, though. Yeah, I mean, at the time, it, we totally were on board and still on board. But it's like, man, 
we could just go back and have Joe Ryan, that would have been great. Uh, I well, have a little bit of a conspiracy theory. Okay. Or not a conspiracy theory, but a, a hypothesis, if you will. Um, I'll say this, that, you know, you look at Shane Boz and you're like, how does this guy, how could this guy ever get hurt? He's got the cleanest, most consistent yeah. mechanics. He's got the, I mean, if you were to build a pitcher, a professional pitcher in a lab, you would build Shane Boz, six yeah. foot four, 220 pounds, the, the shoulders, the arms, the biceps, the wrist, the, the strong lower half, the strong midsection. Like he is like, man. And I don't know if he ever got hurt in the minor leagues. I don't think he's I ever had so, yeah. any sort of Tommy John. But even a, even a guy like – That's me knocking on wood, baby. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, even guys that look like he does that are in as great shape and condition and as athletic as they are, they are uh, – you're, you're not immune to an elbow issue. But I wonder if – not to say this is what caused it, but I don't know if this helped or not, but – being ramped up from so many levels of the minor leagues last year, also pitching in the Olympics, also pitching in the postseason, also pitching in some high leverage situations at the end of the season. And then with the lockout ongoing and unable to have team supervision as he throws in the off season, I wonder if something might've clicked in a bad way there with him. I mean, yeah, I, I, I like the theory. I don't he pitched think... In the, did I mention he pitched in the Olympics? Yes, yeah. you did. I, I You know, I, I don't think his arm has a GPS system. And he's like, hmm, I'm, not, I'm now yeah. throwing in the Olympics. You know, I don't, you know, it, I think it But happens. he had never pitched above a ball coming into 2021. And then he moves. I mean, it's planes, I mean, trains, and automobiles. and Sure, but like, I don't think that that may, maybe... The, if you tell me that this is the most innings he did, then sure. But I don't think it's the moving up the levels or pitching okay. in the Olympics. Maybe because it was the most innings that he threw. Okay, maybe I I, I buy it like I, that. I don't think it's just about innings, but I think also the intensity of those innings and the pressure that ramps up with those innings. Sure. It's one thing to throw innings in A ball, yeah, double A, but when you're pitching in a raucous Yankee Stadium or a pitch, Fenway Park in the in the playoffs, that's uh, exactly my point. Exactly. No, I, I I see it. Or actually, he never actually uh, or pitched in Fenway Park, but pitching in a ALDS game as a 22 year old. There you go. Yeah, I I, I understand. 150 innings in A ball do not count as much as 100 and. 10 in high leverage situations no. of course not sure i'll buy it but um, i think this is just something that is going to ha be happening with with pitchers you know yeah a couple times in their career i don't think it's a it's a major oh man did something happen in 2021 i think it's just going right. to happen and you know what like cash said if there is a time when you don't want this ever to happen but if it were to happen right now is the best time yeah it's not during the playoff chase it's everybody's still getting ramped up. I think it's okay. This is basically best case scenario out of a bad situation. Yeah. Uh, we'll continue this discussion and then uh, I'll discuss my uh, experience going to a Rays spring training game for the first time in a very long time. We'll get to yeah. all that. But first, uh, it is that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us from all the latest odds, contests, and player props. BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino game. So head over to the BetOnline website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online. It is where the game starts. Before uh, we get to your spring training, you mentioned something really interesting. You said, I would have slid uh, Shane Boss behind Kluber and McClanahan. So I think we're both in agreement that McClanahan is going to get the, uh, the ball on opening day, correct? I would believe so, yes. Me too. What does that rotation look like for you now on March 22nd? I guess it would be Shane McClanahan one, Corey Kluber two. And this is where I don't really know. Uh, I guess Drew Rasmussen three. Okay. Brian Yarbrough four and Luis Patino five. I would switch those four and five. Okay. Would you be okay with putting Patino fourth and Yarbrough five? I mean, ideally, I wouldn't have. 
either one of those start the season in the rotation, but you have to do it. You, you wouldn't have, have Patino start the rotation. This is a hot take. I mean, did I would rather have Shane Boz start in the rotation than we Luis can't Pitino. have Shane Boz. So you you would okay, if you had Shane Boz, would Patino be your number five? I guess so. Okay, interesting. And what's funny about all this is uh Jurez Musson has had two Tommy John surgeries. <laughs> Corey Kluber uh, isn't throwing 200 innings anytime soon. If it's anything that, like, again, I know I've made the joke about yucky yarbs, and you know you can bank on Yarbrough to throw 145 plus innings in a year, year in, year out. He's going to give you that, which That's again valuable. is very appreciative of what he's been able to do. Somebody needs to cover the innings. Yeah. Somebody has to be on the bump. And you know what? When you're a guy that apparently he was suffering from arm fatigue or something last year, but he he came this year and he's throwing a little bit harder apparently a couple ticks well, you, up on the fastball can't throw much slower than he's been throwing well my goodness you yeah. know remember when he came up he was throwing 91 yeah. mile an hour fastballs last year he was throwing 86 mile an hour fastballs apparently right now he's throwing 88 okay. 89 uh that's and, nice and by throw and slow with yarbrough i mean in multiple facets i mean in mphs on the fastball and his breaking stuff and also in the time it takes for him to throw one pitch to another pitch love love me some yarb sometimes but let's yeah. speed it up uh are the rays having remorse of not bringing back colin McHugh and or somebody of that ilk it would it be nice to have a bridge guy like that right about now yeah the thing is how many times do you go back to the same well on relievers? Uh, you know, yeah. when you have a really good season as a reliever, the Rays are like, okay, it was nice. Yeah. I hope you have, you find what you're looking for. You know, I so think now Brooks attitude. Rayleigh is that guy with the two year deal plus an option. Okay. Yep. Cause if he has a really good year, then they can be like, huh? Hey, somebody, do you want to trade this guy that had a fantastic season? And we, you can have him for two years yeah. at a very low rate. Yeah, this is it's such a raise way. They're like, we can fix this guy, put some money attached to him, and then we're going to get something. Look, we can joke, but I would almost – I'm almost like having uh, – I, I, it's like uh, I, I'm almost missing – Michael Walker at this point. It's like, can we get Waka back? Late season Waka? See, but Waka comes with a cutter though, baby. He he can't he, he, he But he's not going to throw that cutter. Oh, but he can't help it. He can't help it. You saw him last year. He just can't help it. He he did three straight starts without it and in the fourth one he's like, I'm going to go back to that cutter though. I feel like the Rays really could use another starting level on. Josh Fleming. Okay. I mean, I, uh, Ian Seymour. You're just pulling at straws here. Let's go. I'm telling you. I mean, fine. I would think like Tommy Romero would be next man up. There or you Colby go. White or Phoenix Sanders, something along those lines. There we go. Man, All you really want guys. this Ian Seymour, Ian Seymour thing to work out. I don't know, man. He's like the number 87th ranked prospect. I like it. I, I am. I am. I'm all about the underdogs, baby. Let's go. And here's another thing that the Rays have to consider. They can't play the, oh, we're going to call up and send down Chris Maz 11 times. We're going to call up and send down uh, Lewis Head 15 times. You have the the five options. That's, That's right. it. So that really limits the flexibility on what they're trying to do here. That's why I'm saying having another major league quality arm, not a guy that is shuffle, not a shuffle guy, well, that's why, shuffle border. that's why I feel like Fleming and Yarbrough just gained themselves an opening day roster spot. Maybe Fleming is at the back end of the bullpen. Yarbrough starts in the rotation yeah. or vice versa or whatever. But that's probably what's going to happen. Yarbrough makes the rotation. Fleming is in the bullpen. Something happens. They already have Fleming there. Good thing they raise up a good defense because that's a lot of batted balls in play. Uh, yeah. I'll just put it like that. Regression to the mean, though, baby. Come on. Fleming and Yarbs had a down season last year. Yeah. They'll pick it up this year. I don't disagree. Um, so uh, Shane Boz, over under this upcoming season, 90 innings at the big league level. Mm, Regular season. Over. 100. Does he get to 100? Oh, I don't know about that. But I, I would say at 90, I would feel comfortable. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he, he and uh, – he looks durable. I, I know it's, oh, 100%, it's stupid yeah, to say no. that right now because he's hurt, but like he looks like he's a guy that can dominate a lineup 
which he did yeah. three times in, in the regular season last year. He's Look, he's got the easiest 99 mile an hour fastball. I, and his, he, well, that was my point is like him and Shane McClanahan. Look, we can talk about Corey Kluber's great career of yesteryear. I get that. But like, as far as, and I know the Rays don't like their starters to go deep into games, but those are like, Shane Boz is like a guy that, yeah, I could totally see him going seven and a third, seven and two yeah. thirds on occasion because he has four above average. And really that's not, that's kind of selling him short. I mean, he has four legit pitches. I'll put it like that. And, and so, which makes you go deeper in the game. It, it makes you fool uh, the, the lineups, uh, not only two times, but maybe three times in, uh, through the order. And again, when you have that type of stuff, that means you can have really quick innings. And if yeah. you have quick innings, that means you minimize that pitch count, which means, oh, he's at 50 and he just finished the fifth inning. Yeah. Maybe give him the ball for the sixth inning. Yeah. So I think so. Uh, one last question on this. Uh, who throws okay. more innings, Corey Kluber or Shane Boss? Funny that you say that because I said with Evan Klosky, by the way, who, yeah. who we have to get back on the show. Um, this was last year when they signed him. I said, if he gives the Rays 80 innings, like he gave the Yankees, the money is wet is tremendously yeah. spent. Great. You told me 90. So. I would say Shane, ba I, I, would, oh, that's tough. I mean, if he's your number two, if we're penciling him in as the number two, he better give you more than 90 innings. He better give you 120. See, but that's the thing that it's, you can't think about it like that with the I Rays. I know, I know. It, it, the number two is just the spot where he, he, he he's at. The Rays are literally going to be throwing nine, yeah. 10 starters in there. I'm just going to say this right now on opening day, this rotation doesn't look that great in comparison to the rest of, the competition. It would be better if Shane Boz was yeah. in that rotation and then you can be like, I see it. Yeah. But right now, it, and it Tyler looks... Glass now too, who also had arthroscopic surgery on his what ankle uh, ankle. Yeah. So he's definitely not going to be pitching this year for the race. Oh, he is. It's just two to three weeks. Uh, so it's fine. So he'll be, I mean, he'll be throwing, but not in a meaningful game. He will no, uh, no. on a backfield somewhere and Port Charlotte. He did say that uh, if everything goes well, he could be pitching this year. So, or for a different organization, he won't. that might have to be a prop bet. Will he throw a meaningful pitch for the Rays in 2022? Easy, yes. Yeah, sign me up for that one. All right. Uh, you know what? You can also sign me up for. What's that? You can you can sign me up to to, to save time and money. By using Rock Auto, Kevin. Okay. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? That doesn't make sense. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could ever need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go check out their easy-to-use website today to find a solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, uh, Ulysses, uh, as I mentioned early on, I did attend yes. a Rays spring training game this past Saturday at Charlotte Sports Park. They were facing the defending World Series champions. Spill it. Uh, how many autographs were you asked uh, to sign? Uh, like 30 or 40. I knew it. Uh, I knew zero. it. <laughs> zero. Big, <laughs> fat, zero. Although part of the problem was I arrived like an hour late to the game, which I didn't have to pay parking for, which is nice. Really? They do that at spring training? If you don't, if you don't, well, I guess when you arrive by the fifth inning, then <laughs> and all the main, all the big names are gone. Oh like by the time God. I got to the game, uh -huh. I didn't recognize a single name on the Braves. Really? Not a single name. Maybe the Drew Waters kid, if that's even his name. Everybody else blanked. My goodness. Now I knew some of the Rays players, of course. Of course. We are a Rays podcast, and yes. we also had some uh, friends of the pod, uh, Jack Leboski, Ford Proctor, for example. Yes. Um, I think I got to see a little bit of Manny Margot and Yandy Diaz before they were taking out. And Brett Phillips, who, man, he is in great shape. Yeah, he, he looks good, doesn't him he? him up close, like, yeah, shedding 78% body fat. He looks like an athlete again. Not saying awesome. he never looked like an athlete, but, like, he's, man, I could, if he was already as, fast and athletic as he was last year this year 
watch out. He could be in for a, a decent year. Uh, yeah. The, the fan favorite of the Rays, I guess. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Because if he has a really good start of the season, and then we can all go back to the Kevin Kiermaier rumor yeah. mill. Uh, trade Kiermaier for a pitcher. You can trade him for whatever the heck you are going to get. But if Manny Margot and Brett Phillips are doing really well yeah. with their splits, doing what they need to be doing against righties and lefties, boom, mm -hmm. you can then that start nice. that again. Um, so the game was uh, it was a nine-inning game and ended in a tie, four to four, which uh, nice. unless you're a fan of the ties. So I am. I think there was some confusion. We're like, oh, are we, is this? Really? Okay? The people were like, what? Like, yeah, there were some people that weren't really sure. <laughs> uh, do you want my pros or my cons first from my hit, experience? Hit me with the negatives first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, one. Okay. Uh, the hour, 45-minute drive from greater <laughs> Tampa Bay area to Port Charlotte for a spring training game. Like, let's put that thing in Pasco County already. Yeah. Let's get it done with it. Just yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Uh, speaking of time and time being wasted, uh, I thought getting in and out of the – Trop was bad. Uh, now, getting in and out of or getting out of Charlotte Sports Park isn't quite as bad, but it's pretty darn bad. It's like one way in, one way out. And Woof. I think we waited like we just waited and sat in the car for 45 minutes and let traffic clear because all the it was Jeez. like a bottleneck approach because it's so bad where you have all those parking spaces trying to get out and trying to get into one lane. And get out of the so you can have a, a second tail tail tailgate party to just Basically, wait it out. Yeah, we weren't the only ones that did that. We we're just like hang. I mean, we I went to this team store afterwards, went okay. to the restroom. Like we really like took our time. No lie. I think um I think uh the game ended around 345. That sounds about right. And then we I think got in our cars and actually left the ballpark like 445. That's not optimal. So no, it was not optimal. So unless you're like, okay, we're leaving after the seventh or eighth inning, we want to be traffic. You're kind of going to be screwed, especially if. I but mean, if I'll, you're a prospect watcher, you want to see the young guys, then then you're screwed. Yeah, but we didn't really see that many great prospects, did we? I mean, uh, I don't know. Miles uh, Mosterboni. That's that's who we got there. Like, I don't. I didn't get to see Josh. Lowe. Again, I arrived an hour late, so I don't right. know who. who who I may have missed. No, I mean the, the D prospects. The, the Oh, you're talking about like uh, yeah. the the backfield complex league guys. Okay, yes. I got you. Yeah, yeah, if you're really into that, uh, more power to you. Yeah. Um, so the parking lot was an issue. Okay. Um, the And again, this is partially on me, but the process of buying a ticket mm -hmm. on the MLB app was a pain in the neck. You can buy it face-to-face? No. Uh, Even for spring training? No. I would that's ridiculous. I feel like man. Do so they know their target audience? It's like 79 yeah. year olds. Oh, and that's the thing. Like, I felt like a boomer trying to buy a ticket because first <laughs> off, I had to update the MLB app. Oh no. So update that. Without Wi-Fi, by the way. Yeah. So that took that took like five minutes alone. Then I feel like I'm just complaining here, but I know you are. Then I have to <laughs> sign in, which uh -huh. I don't remember my password. I barely remember my email that I signed yeah. up with because it's been so long since I, you know, bought a ticket online. Oh my uh, God. And then not only that, I've got to enter in my credit card information. So it was literally, Oof. it was, I mean, if and I've seen your wallet, your wallet is a thick George Costanza type of wallet. I mean, I feel like it'd be so much easier, at least with spring training, just to say, hey, Apple Pay, and then print me out a receipt and let me, okay, print me out a receipt what? for section uh, 205, and I'm, I'm good. That's all I need, really. Yeah. Like, do it like a cash know, pay or a, a grain a cash app like or Venmo. The, yeah. Yeah. Just like you're at a grocery store and you're, you want to Apple Pay. Okay. That's fine. Three. That's cashless. Boop, 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 that's cash. Boop, boop, boop. But the fact that I've got to like update the app, I got to log in, and then I got to enter in my credit card information because I don't want to save that on my phone necessarily. Look, I'm a boomer. I get it. But it was, <laughs> Now, I will say, this is one of the pros. The support staff was unbelievable. Because oh, there you go. the lady oh, nice. really walked us through the process. Because we also had to, like, scan the QR code to get the app. Oh, God, it was just a mess. Um, but the support staff was great. Like the, That's awesome. Good could, for them. And you could tell that they have had to do this a time or two where they had to go step by step and instruct and have a lot of patience with people that are just trying to get into the ballpark. And people are standing outside long, in the heat. How, how long did you stay outside trying to do this whole ticket ordeal? Oh, I think it, it I mean, it felt like three years, but it <laughs> legit, I think was 15 minutes. 
So that, that's, fact, a, that's a good even, inning. That's a good even, inning. We didn't even do it on my phone. We did it on somebody else's phone because they had it was more accessible. We were like passing around, like we were all trying to do it at the same time. Like, hey, who can log in and and sign up fast enough? And so that was a, a mess. Although the the lady that helped us, I wish I remembered her name, but she was great. She also advised us, hey, if you're looking to sit in the shade, here's the spots to do that. These are good seats. You know, there you go. Very, that's nice. Very helpful with that. And I also had help from another guy that. Uh, you know, one of the, I guess, ushers uh, or customer service reps, you know, he said he saw me and realized that, yeah, I uh, haven't been outside very much. I'm pale. And he was like, uh, you know, we have, uh, if you're looking for sunscreen, we have a first aid center at the ballpark that, and we give out sunscreen. I was like, That's let's good to know, go. Cause I wouldn't even really think of that. So good for that. I've, I've got to give credit as much as a headache and a pain in the ass that trying to get a damn ticket is and trying to get into a freaking spring training game, which it was a relief and so nice to be able to watch baseball in person so intimately and not yeah. have to worry about the COVID stuff and not have to worry about the lockout stuff. That was that was great. But um, despite all the, the headaches of trying to get in and get out of the ballpark, the people that work there, I got to give them a lot of credit. So, I love that this – Story had a yeah. good ending, a happy um, ending. Good, now, good, good I, for those people. Yes. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, I, I said a lot of negatives there. I guess the, the I guess one of the positives was the team store is pretty cool. You know, they yeah. have a nice, uh, good collection. Things weren't so so overpriced. And what I also liked about the ballpark was um, so they have a concession line, food concession, but they also have a beverage line. So they've got an area where you can just get. Oh, I like that. For the most part, instead of, okay, I'm not really looking to get a hot dog in a hundred degree right. heat. I just want a beer. I just want a cocktail. I just want a soda. There's a separate area section for that. And that was, and, and that line was obviously a lot shorter because, you know, kids, all they want is food and everything. Well, exactly. Us adults just yeah. want a little adult beverage. So uh, that was nice. You're very um, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and last thing, last thing. Okay. Um, you will notice. Well, Ulysses, you are going to a spring training game sometime. Yeah, I think so. Okay. On the weekend, yeah. Uh, man, in addition to baseball and finding a lot of baseball fans, yeah. I've I've also learned and encountered that uh, baseball game is also like a Karen convention. Oh, no, lot- really? Karen's all over the place. Woof. Everybody, can I see the manager? Ray's, Ray's Karen's. Braves Karen's Karen like it is oh my gosh is a Karenathon Karenathon to the nth degree and also the Karen the, Palooza it's also the this guy sucks guy like there's so many of uh, okay what's the opposite of Karen for the guys maybe a Kevin <laughs> <laughs> that could be it <laughs> I don't know a, a Chad a Mark oh, a Bill good. no that's good that's good. I like uh, it. You're, but the, no, you're the outlier, baby. No, if you go to a spring training game, just yeah. take a look around. Yeah. Take a little 360 tour. Oh, my God. And uh, you'll notice a lot of cameras. A lot of people got to see the manager, man. That is true. Yeah. And I, I, I just like to listen and observe. And yeah. Eavesdrop and people watch. And it's like. It's nice. Man. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Karens with uh, Freddie Freeman jerseys, which, you know, they got to <laughs> they got to turn that in if you're a. You're a Braves fan. We saw a couple of those. So. There you go. That was the other thing too about uh, the Braves facing the Rays is like, what colors are we rocking here? Because the Braves have similar color yeah. or the similar uh, the the dark blue, I guess, yeah. as the Rays do uh, at certain points. So well, anyway, that's fun, man. So would you recommend people go see the Rays at Port Charlotte? Ultimately, I, I would. I would. I would probably just plan ahead a little bit. Uh, buy your tickets ahead of time. There you go. That's and, a good one. Um, either tailgate after the game or leave after the sixth or seventh inning. So you beat traffic. Oh, look at that. Spring training yeah. tips yeah. brought to you by Locked On Race. There we people. go. And there find you. a shaded seating because that was really comfortable with the overhead. Yes. Again, it's a really nice ballpark. It, it is. is a great, great ballpark. Uh, it's a shame that, I mean, it's, it's kind so of far out, away. Yeah, it's so far away and that it's not really being. I mean, it's a Florida complex. The the fact that there's not a true minor league baseball team being played there is a shame, a shame for sure. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen to that place in, in 10 years. So we'll, we'll see, yeah. but, um, yeah, I, uh, 
I'm planning to go to a couple more spring training games. I'm planning to, uh, I, I said this a little bit ago that, um, you know, I'm going to try to go to a couple of different ballparks. I'm not just going to go to, you, did. you know, Charlotte Sports Park. So I think uh, in a week or two, I might go to uh, where the Phillies play in Clearwater, might mosey around a little bit. And uh, who knows? I might give my pros and cons there. So <laughs> okay. I guarantee well, I'll find a lot of Karens, regardless, wherever I go. We're looking forward to that, yes. buddy. All right. There we go. Uh, hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs> um, thank you for making the Locked on Rays podcast your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on MLB podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow.